This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. is proud to have on a very prolific artist, uh, a guy who believes in uh, creating beautiful things for the world and uh, really doing it in a great and fantastic way, a guy who I really appreciate as an art hero because of the like historic album cover art he did for the late, great Tupac, a.k.a. Machiavelli, uh, for the uh, Machiavelli album. Without further ado, Brother Ronald Favariske Brent, how you doing today, sir? Man, I'm doing all right, man. Thank you. Appreciate you um, hitting me up. I mean, it's an honor, man. I've been a fan of yours. I mean, your reputation precedes you, like I said, when I had, uh, had a chance to buy that Tupac album, the last one he did as a as a the living person he actually had, you know, control over. And to see that cover art you did for it was like, you, you took it to the next level as far as like, you know, uh, that was a hip-hop classic album and that was a classic album cover. So I want to know, like, what was your thought process behind that cover art that you did? I mean, the thought process, I mean, it was given to me by Tupac, you know what I mean? And I just created what he what he had, you know, had put in the words for me, you know, turn it to art, you know what I mean? That's great. And also I read your, your wonderful uh, post you did about your last days with Tupac. Like, he actually had a chance to see it right before he got killed down in Las Vegas, correct? Yeah, actually, that was the... That Friday before we left to go to uh, to the Vegas, that Saturday, you know what I mean? That Friday is when I turned in the artwork to him, you know, for the Machiavelli album. And, I, you know, that's kind of like, that was really like one of my, that was what not really like what that actually was my last day speaking to him when I turned in the artwork to him that Friday. We had a brief conversation about some other artwork that he wanted me to do. And I was leaving in hopes that when we come back for Vegas, you know, everything was going to be gravy, but he didn't make it back. Yeah, definitely. Cause I remember you did a wonderful job in that post. Like, he actually he actually wanted to do an art show for you. That would have been awesome if that had happened. Unfortunately, we already know what happened with the history. But, I mean, I'd like to ask you, like, what do you feel like is the greatest misconception about Tupac? Because you actually had a chance to interact with him and work with him as a colleague. What do you think is the greatest misconception out there about him? I mean, the greatest misconception I think is out there about him, everybody wanted to, you know, think that he was just a violent person or whatever, but I really, that's not really the case with, with him, you know what I mean? He was a real cool person, you know, from, from me dealing with him, like I, like I told everybody in the past, you know what I mean? I was, I was an artist just drawn around a neighborhood or whatever, you know what I mean? And he, he took me from that to the industry, you know what I mean? Drawn behind him. And actually, when I started drawing for him, everybody else wanted me to draw for them, you know what I mean? So, that was a good thing, man. You know what I mean? So anybody out there that think that he was just really a terrible dude, no, he wasn't because he helped people out, and I'm one of the ones that he helped out. That's great. And I also want to know how you hook up with Del Froke. He did a lot of great uh, other uh, album covers and art uh, projects for different classic albums with Del Froke Records. How do you get a chance to hook up with Suge and Del Froke Records? I mean, it's actually a crazy thing. You know what I mean? I grew up in the same neighborhood Suge from, you know what I mean? I used to be the one that, when somebody from the neighborhood died, I would be the one that drew all, you know, airbrushed all the recipe shirts and stuff like that. And I actually started working for the company Swami, which was in our neighborhood. You know what I mean? Airbrushing T-shirts. And um, my um, my my play cousin actually took some of my art to Suge, showed him a portfolio of mine with some with some drawings and stuff like that. And the next thing I know, you know, he was, he was sending word by her for that he wanted to meet me. And it just so happens the day that I met him, I was at work at the Compton Swami. I was at work at the Compton Swami airbrushing, and I just ran an errand. And when I came back, they were out there shooting a video for um, California Love. So I made my way over there to talk to Suge. And once I had made a connection with him and started talking to him, he wanted me to go get my same portfolio. And man, I left from there with, to run to go grab my portfolio. I begged for him not to leave, and he told me that he wasn't going to leave, so I ran to go get my portfolio. When I ran back with my portfolio, he looked through it, and he told me to walk with him. And when I walked with him, we walked over to a van, and he opened up the door, and Tupac was in there. 
supply got out. He looked at my um, portfolio, told Shook he wanted me to work with him. I think the first project I was supposed to work on was supposed to have been for um, America's Most Wanted. He wanted me to work on a pro- work on a, some art for that, which I didn't end up working actually working on the artwork for um, America's Most Wanted, but I did work on an insert for All Eyes on Me. I did the airbrush work in that oh, album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once he looked, he told Shook he wanted me to get on, and then Shook, Shook two weeks after that, I was on, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. That's a beautiful thing, man. He's like, you just said the universe was looking out for your best interest, but you was living your passions. You was living out loud your passions. And I think that's a lesson that we all can learn, that you actually follow your passions and you made opportunities manifest for yourself. Yeah, you know, when I started seeing Death Row, you know, being a man in my neighborhood, like, you know, seeing cats with low riders and stuff like that, I just kept telling myself that I was going to get on, and I, and I I figured out a way to get on, and I finally got on. You know what I mean? I mean, you actually had the will and the talent. You know, the more, like, I think Muhammad Ali says it's more important to have the will than just skill. You know, if you want to win and be a champion, you are yeah, definitely, man, you definitely have to have that mindset like that's what you want to do and go out there and get it. It's not going to mm-hmm. come to you, you know what I mean? So you got to get out there and get it if that's what you want. And I, I got out there, and I, I mean, I had that. I already had that background with the airbrush work and the drawing because, I mean, I had been in the hip-hop and, and, and doing graffiti like my entire life, you know what I mean, growing up. And it just took me to that next level, you know what I mean? Because I, I had graffiti crews and all of that. And I, I I went to that next level, and it landed me on death row. And I was like to ask, too, I mean, I read a little bit of your stuff, but you also had some formal training, right, some formal art school training or high school, correct? I mean, the only the only art training I had was from my, my high school art teacher. Other than that, everything else I learned on the streets, and I learned from another airbrush artist who I, I, I worked with growing up as a kid. Other than that, I learned everything on my own. I mean, I think, I think all education is self-education. you got to be motivated to learn the material and the subject. You write about that. Yeah, man, I was motivated because, I mean, like I said, I eat, live, I sleep, I breathe, I doodle the art. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I definitely know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you know, well, I'm listening. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was saying, like, you know, um, I just think that, like, this thing about you actually, you grew up in a neighborhood with a guy who ended up making a living American dream. And he came back to the neighborhood to give back, give you a chance, and give some of other people, put them on the payroll and whatnot. And, like, you know, Compton got this uh, reputation of being a very notorious neighborhood or, you know, community, you know, based in NWA. I'm in Memphis. The first time I heard about you, I was, like, you know, listening to Ice-T and NWA and also look at the movie Colors. You know, I heard about, you know, the reputation of DJ Quick and just, like, Compton. I remember when they came out, it was real hot. But, you know, look at the fact that you had people in the neighborhood that looked out for you, they provided a community that supported what you was doing. I know I talked to a lot of artists, even in Memphis, like we always talk about it's a lack of support from the community. But to you, it seemed like it was a community for you to able to harness your craft and take it to the next level. I mean, it was. I mean, because like I, I knew everybody in my neighborhood. In my neighborhood, like if somebody wanted something drew in the neighborhood, they already knew to get at me other than hen dog. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But from my side, just from my perspective, you know, on my side, I had everybody getting at me. And anything anything that I I did in the neighborhood, I got support from it. You know what I mean? Because everybody, like I said, I grew up drawing and everybody knew me from that. I mean, it, it paid off for you. I mean, you know, you, you supply the demand. You mean the needs that the people want. So, I mean, that's a smart business. That's good business. And I'd like to ask you, too, I mean, because, like, you know, we talk about Suge Knight. And, you know, we got this reputation. Now, he got this great, you know, notorious, infamous reputation. So I'd like to ask you as a person who grew up in the same neighborhood with this guy who actually worked for this guy, what is the greatest misconception in your opinion about Suge Knight? Well, you know, right now I don't even have no no comment right now. I understand. Yeah, I don't have no comment right now, man. So how do you feel like we, let's talk about like the end, like on Tupac being killed and after that, did you feel like your, your, uh, your place in death row was in jeopardy in terms of, like, you know, you, know, you had a guy who actually was an advocate for what you was doing, who actually, like, you know, had projects for you lined up. You did that wonderful art, cover artwork for uh, Tupac. Do you feel like, you you know, you feel like that, you know, you was in a precarious situation in terms of career investment at death row? I mean, I felt like I was in a precarious situation when they asked me to create Machiavelli. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> why is that? Tell me in your own words why you say that. Yeah, I mean, in my own words, just saying that, like, to be truthfully honest, like I felt like 
I don't know. I feel kind of odd doing that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, and for me to turn that in to him that Friday and for him to get shot the next day. Like, like that good Friday, of, right? <laughs> so like the, yeah, yeah, like so the, yeah. That scene, that was, that's a real eerie feeling to me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and I knew it's it's really like it's really it's really an emotional thing when I think about it because sometimes I feel like you know I've been blessed and cursed like I was blessed to be in his life and I was cursed at the at the end you know what I mean because once I turned him over that those were the end result because I just I just felt like that was I don't know it was kind of sacred like you know what I mean right. yeah I mean do you feel like you know just talking to Tupac and knowing him and you know about the lyrics you know what I'm saying. Like, it's a elder once told me your words create worlds. Like, I think about Biggie Smalls and Taurus B.I.G. His first album was, what, Ready to Die? And then his second album was Life After Death, and it came out after he died. And, you know, with Tupac, he always talked about death around the corner, you know, very hunting, like, you know, after life lyrics. Do you feel like he was fated to live a short life? I mean, do you get that type of energy from him that he wasn't destined to be here for long? I mean, yeah, I kind of did get that type of energy as me be just being a fan listening to his music. But all, the only really comment that I could say for is that is what you put in the universe is what you get back. Mm. But, you know, like, one thing I think it was a blessing because, I mean, that's like what you did was immor- it's going to be immortalized, man. It's like it's up there as far as, like, you know, the greatest cover art ever done. I mean, it's up there with, to me, Bitches Brew and some other just few select ones. Like, you really did your thing. Man, I really oh, appreciate out. that, and I, I mean, like, like at the end of the day, I'm really grateful that you know what I mean that 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 solidified my mark in the world. So when I leave here, my name will still that'll still carry me on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I'm really I'm really appreciative for that. But at the same token, like I told you before, my story before, I still feel kind of eerie about it, especially to this day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not a day. It's not a day that I can't live my life without a brief reminder of what happened back then, 15 years ago, and it's also fresh right now. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It, it's like it's been that long, though. It's like it's crazy how time go by for, so fast. Yeah, it does, and it's like sometimes I want to walk away and just live my life, but then I don't feel like I'm able to because every day, like I said, I get a reminder of that. You know what I mean? It's a constant reminder of what I did in the past and that and that history. I guess it'll just precede me, and even in and even in from life and even in death. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, because the work, I mean, it's about substance. To me, I always talk about quality over quantity. But you had somebody, Tupac, who had the ability to help both quantity and quality at the same time. And the fact that you'll be synonymous, your work will be synonymous and forever connected with that. I mean, it was a classic hip-hop album. It was a great conceptual album. It still stands the test of time. You have to mean people ripping off of what Tupac did on that album. And on, 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 our, on our eyes on me, too, that was the first you know, double hip-hop CD in history. It actually was a double hip-hop CD. Yeah. <laughs> it had so many things on there. I mean, it's classic, man. So to, to be always forever connected with that type of masterwork, man, is incredible, man. That's a, a, a tremendous legacy that you have, you know, and that your, your people will be proud of for generations to come. Well, I appreciate that so much, man. Really now, you inspired me, man. I mean, I'm really inspired. Me. I tried to do my little own take on it when I was in high school, but it's like, that really inspired me. That want me, you know, I one day want to do a Tupac cover. Now that he died and stuff like that, you know, you wish that he was still around, you know. But I, are you surprised at how he's being received in Delft, like in terms of his legacy? I mean, Pac, 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 Pac is who he was, you know what I mean? He, he mm-hmm. is somebody that's going to be remembered, you know what I mean? Like like, like they say right now, he's a black Elvis. Right. He is going to go on our grandkids, their grandkids, or whatever probably he's going to be in the future is they're all going to be listening to Pac. He's never going to die, man. Even though he's not here with us in the flesh, man, he's still here with us in spirit. And I don't think that the fans or anybody are is just going to let him just run off like that without without being around for us to hear anymore, man, or pay attention to. It's, it's just too incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I definitely agree with you, because I'm a Tupac fan. But I want to ask you this, man. You're an artist, man. You're a great artist. At that. You're not just a artist. You're actually a great artist because you do your craft and do it well. Like, what, well, how do you think it's the handling of the recording material? You think Tupac would approve? Like, so, I mean, I think about um, the one that Eminem produced. Like, he speed up his voice a little bit on some of the tracks and whatnot. And then some yeah, of the people that will collaborate with. Okay. Yeah, I just I just did an interview with Ray Love about that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's gonna be airing on um on, on, on my site, bombfirst dot com and then on, on on our partner site, truth for truth about Tupac dot com, which is just an interview. The the thing uh, of how I perceive his music out today is is like when Pac was alive, 
and he made these songs with these people on these songs, that was something he approved because, you know what I mean? Right. He had to be feeling that person in order for that person to be on that track. Mm-hmm. I mean, today with everybody taking taking people off and adding people and stuff like that, I don't think, I can't really say that he would have approved that. You know what I mean? He He's not here, and I don't care how hot they think they are today. He may not have even approved that because he was very selective of what people he picked two right. three tracks with. You know what I mean? So I mm-hmm. feel like the music, the music is not the way that he wanted. You know what I mean? It is changing, but who am I to say? My opinion, my opinion really doesn't mean nothing to to anybody else other than me. You know what right. I mean? But from where I'm coming from, from my standpoint, from just from seeing how I dealt, how I dealt with Pac on the little time that I dealt with him, and from being in the studio the little times that I were, I don't think that he would approve of it today. Yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, I'm kind of mixed on it. Cause I just look at some of the stuff, like even like the people that he had problems with, like you know Jay Z or you know, something like that. I don't know, like if he ever reconciled. I heard that he reconciled with Nas before he died. You know. Yeah, I, did. I heard about that. He did, okay. but that that was something that Shug does comment on that a lot. He did reconcile with Nas. Okay. That was that was something that was known. That is a fact. He did reconcile with him before he passed. Okay, but like with other people, like yeah, it just sounds kind of I don't know weird. And I also want to ask you this too, as an artist, as a fan, as just as a human being, what you thought about the hologram that they did at Coachella or Tupac? I mean, it was just interesting. So what are your it thoughts? Was, it, it was interesting to me, eerie and emotional at the same time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, brought, it just brought back every every memory, every. Every everything that I could have, everything that I just lived back in that day, it just seemed like it all just came back again. Like like I said, it's not a day that it doesn't go by that I don't have that thought. But seeing that just like kind of just put it in a vision, like you know what I mean. Mm. And they did it well. It's kind of spooky though. That, you, it makes you wonder what else they doing besides entertainment with the Halloween. Yeah, man, that, <laughs> it, it was really like I, like I told you, it was eerie to me. Like uh-huh. you know, it was scary. Like it was it was it was crazy. You know, but, like, it's funny because they use Tupac. I, I feel like he, they use him as a chosen horse because Tupac warned us, I think, in like Illuminati. He talked about the New World Order. So he talked about all the people that were doing things and conspiring against the people. And that's been his whole, like, art career, trying to like, educate and inform people about what's really going on. And for them to use Tupac as the hologram, it was like, like a chosen horse or something like that for the things to come. Like, it was a distraction. Cause they, whatever they, I mean, because they could do that. Because it's to look at that and see he has mannerisms and, just to see how you look at me. What else are they doing that we don't really know about? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, but it was it was sick though. I'll give it to him. It was a, it was it was a good thing. It was well done. I appreciate. it. I mean, to pick him or all the artists they could have picked. I mean, it's gonna be interesting uh, to yeah. see what come on next. But also, I want to ask you, like, what is your favorite Tupac memory that you have? I mean, my favorite memory of him was just taking him to Machiavelli, taking him to Machiavelli cover, and for him to just just to embrace me and ask me to start doing stuff for his pad and to say that he had me, you know, on my upcoming art show. You know what I mean? That's 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 my favorite memory. I know it sounds kind of selfish, but for no, me, that's no, my favorite memory. memory. You know what I mean? That's that's one of my favorite memories, even though it didn't get to happen, but to mm-hmm. know that that was going to happen. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that, that's, that's one of my favorites right there. I was going to ask you, like, life after Pac. I mean, we, you know, I know you get those questions about Pac all the time because of your connection with him. But, like, I want to know how was it as far as your art career and, how, you know, to just adjust to life after Pac. How was it? Man, I mean, it was terrible, dog. Mm. I mean, it's terrible. It's a, it's a terrible situation, man. Like like I said, like, you know what I mean? Sometimes I feel like, you know what I mean, I'm blessed and I'm cursed in this. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, then, um, mm-hmm. and I mean, I mean, it's just it's just crazy to just know to know that you know what I mean that you know he's not here no more, and to know what could have happened if he would have been here and to see where I am right now. Do you think he would have stayed involved in just musical? What do you what do you see in Pop doing right now? I mean, he would be in his forties, which would be an interesting to think about. What do you think he would? Be I don't doing know. Right maybe now? by maybe by now in his forties, man. Maybe he would have probably been an active activist right now, man. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's not for me to say. I don't know. That's true, but you know, I was reading something about Samuel Jackson. A lot of people don't know. Thirty years ago, Samuel Jackson was a was a crackhead, right? You know, he was going to drug rehab, heroin overdosing, and all that stuff. But you know, when he was a younger man, he was activist at Morehouse. He was involved with the Black Panther Party, and he said in an interview, like several years ago, that the FBI came to his mama's house and told him if his, if his son remained in the party and the movement, that he'd be 
there within a year. And uh, this thing about, you know, Tupac, he comes from that, you know, he's a Black Panther Cub. You look at his roots, they're very strong in the movement and the struggle. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it would have been fascinating to see what would have happened. I mean, it's like Sam Jackson got out, you know, and also Sam Jackson was born the same year as Fred Hampton. They killed Fred Hampton at 21. You know, Pac died at 25. You just don't know. It's, it's hard to speculate. But I do know this, that, you know, the fact that he was as well-known as he was, he made his contribution at 25. It's kind of like Quincy Jones said in his uh, vibe tribute to Pop some years ago. If he died at 25, he'd be a nobody. If Miles Davis or Duke Ellington or anybody like that died at 25, they, you would never know about them. They'll just be a footnote in history yeah. in many cases. So, I mean, it, it's impressive. Like, it's about quality sometimes versus quantity. But I want to ask you about your career in terms of, like, how has it been for you in the art world? You know, has it been a struggle in terms of trying to get access to certain places in the art world? Uh, to try to get the respect that your artwork deserves? I mean, to be truthfully honest, like, I haven't really reached out into the art world like that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's basically kind of been like a, yo, Risky, can you do my album cover? Yo, Risky, can you do my shirt? Yo, Risky, can you do this? Yo, Risky, can you do that? That's That's been my world. My world hasn't really been a, been a factor, oh, let me see if I can get in this this gallery, or let me see how far I could get into this art tournament, or let me see how far I could get into putting my stuff in the museum. I've never really tried to go that route with my career. Mm-hmm. But that is something for me to start thinking about. You know what I mean? Right. Have people approach you from that world about showing your work, like to do what Tupac suggests, help you an art show? I mean, I just had a guy. I just had a guy approach me maybe about. Uh, I'm gonna say they approached me in January, but I just now sat down, sat down with him again maybe about two weeks ago mm-hmm. about getting involved with some art stuff and letting people see my my Machiavelli album cover and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's something that I'm thinking about right now, but I, I I haven't had the opportunity to do. So you still have the original Machiavelli painting you did. Oh, yeah, man. I got it posted oh, wow. on Facebook. That's me holding it right there at the top. Oh, wow. So, man, oh, actually, have you got any bids on this, man? I know you could get a lot of money for it. Man, hey, you know what? And uh, actually, in 2005, I sold prints of it. I printed some prints off of the original, and I was selling prints like that. Mm-hmm. And I did that for a while. I mean, it was kind of successful. You know what I mean? It did kind of all right. But the original, I, I kind of kept. I mean, I, in, in time, in time, I I feel like I do want to I do want to auction it off or sell it to get rid of. I mean, because it's it's price, it should be priceless. Like you know, what it I mean? is. I mean, I can see getting a lot of money, man. I mean, I just see. I mean, if you, you know, if you if ever in a hole, or whatever, and you needed some money, I'm sure you could get a lot of money for that for that man. Man, I wouldn't even know who to go to. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean, who is going to uh-huh. give me what it's worth? You know what I mean. That's true. That that's a that's a great point, man. What is it really worth? Who could, who could really come? Yeah, with what is it? I I really I really don't know what it's worth to be mm-hmm. honest. Wow, I mean that's amazing that you. I mean that's awesome, man. I just like wow, you got that. That's like a, you know that's awesome to think about. It's like having like a Louis Armstrong trumpet or something. I don't know. Man. It's like something to have something that's connected to Tupac like that. That you know he that he approve of like he that he commissioned you to do. Yeah. There'll be an awesome collective idol for somebody. But I, I just want to ask you, like, you know, in terms of, like, so what is your demographic? Who is your clientele? What would you say will be, like, your average clientele, like, what, demographic-wise? Who buys your work? Who supports your work? I mean, that's hard to say because, I mean, I have I have celebrities that, that I do clothing and stuff like for on sometimes, you know what I mean, logos and shit like that. And then, I mm-hmm. mean, I have regular people that, I mean, average people that I do work for. I really don't have a set. A set clientele. I deal. I deal with. I deal with pe- pe- people. I deal with people. You know what I mean? Regular people, right. just like me. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome thing about. It. Have you ever thought about like coming out? I mean, I know you you, you do clothes, but you ever think about doing like a fashion line and stuff? Like you know, having available. I mean, you ever think about that type of element of the game? No, actually, I haven't even. I haven't even thought all of that out, man. I haven't thought all of that out. I mean, it's just it's it's a cra- it's crazy to be an artist, man. It really is because it's mm-hmm. like, man, you want to you want to do so many things, and I mean, I'm not just I'm not just inclined in art, man. I write too, you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's hard, like sometimes. <laughs> I, sometimes I wish I was two people, man. I mean, a lot of times you you are two people as artists. You always have you have these different personalities. You gotta you gotta accommodate sometimes. Just to deal with yeah, people, and deal with life. I understand what you're saying though, but do you have anybody? Like, 
Is like anybody out there, I mean, you know, like you, you say, well, I want to partner with this person. They got something I need in terms of resources. I got the talent. They got the resources and connections. Let's work it out. Has it been hard for you to meet people like that? They can handle the business aspects of what you do and that you handle the creative aspect. I mean, not really. I mean, right now, I mean, I, I, right now, I, you know, I, I've, I've just, I've just um, joined the entertainment company called 100 ENT. You know what I mean? And I, I haven't been with a record. I haven't been with an independent record label. And I mean, in like years. You know what I mean? But I felt so strongly about the people that I that I decided to work with. You know what I mean? That um that I, I decided to jump on board. And I mean, one of the people that I work with. You know what I mean? His name is um Big Face One Hundred. Actually, he's the um he's the CEO of the company. He calls himself an MCEO because he's a rapper. Mm-hmm. And um, he's out of Compton, too, you know what I mean? And that's why I felt so connected with him. And actually, he's the gang's brother, you know what I mean? Recording mm-hmm. artist, the gang. Mm. I, I was introduced to him one day, and I felt strongly about the connection that me and him had because it's like both of us know what it's like to be at the top, you know what I mean? And we want to stay get there again. Right. So I'm just kind of like recently, like I said, I got down with this entertainment company, so I've been working with them, doing a little artwork here and there, and doing another little office work. Because, I, like I said, I'm not just an artist, you know what I mean? I'm a, right. I'm a businessman, like, you know what I mean? It yeah, definitely. I mean, also you're a brand. I mean, you're a brand. Like well, Jay Z said, I'm a businessman. You know what I'm saying? Like you're a brand. You're your own brand. You promote it well. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. I, I really appreciate you. Us. With the little that I'm doing right now, because I really don't even think that I'm really spreading myself out as thick as I can. Mm-hmm. What would be a dream project to do in terms of, it don't have to be necessarily just a, a airbrush painting or whatever. What would be a dream project for you? Like, what's on your bucket list to do that you'd like to get accomplished? You know what? What I said What I said that I wanted to do next, I mean, I, I've been in the industry. I've done celebrity clothing. I mean, I've done album covers. I got at least five, I believe it's five platinum album covers out there. Oh, wow. I mean, um, two years ago, I did my I did two children books, illustrations for two children books. So I said the only thing left for me to do to be involved with is a movie. So that's kind of what I want to, like, I, I want to kind of get into. So I've been thinking about taking a couple of courses here and there to get into an animation where I can get involved into the movie scene, you know what I mean, with doing um with CGI's and stuff like that. Right. You know, I'm so that, go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. No, I'm saying so that 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 was my next stop that I was thinking about. My next step that I've been thinking about. I would hope one of your projects would be to turn your last day with Tupac into like a movie feature. So I'd be that'd be an awesome story. I mean, I think that needs to be told. There's another side, like what you had wrote in your Facebook posting about your, you know, the Machiavelli painting, getting his approval, seeing him on that Friday. I mean, I think that'd be an awesome movie. I mean, have you thought about you know turning it into a screenplay? You know what? I, I haven't even thought about it. Sometimes I think to myself, I wonder who will really want to hear my story. You know what I mean? You'd be Not surprised. Not to put myself in, but uh-huh. I don't wonder who, who, how many people will really want to hear my story and see where I'm coming from, or my perspective of it. And that's why I kind of wrote that story. I, I believe it's six days in, one day out. I maybe that, that maybe that one might be what you're speaking of the story that I wrote. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And also, like, I want to ask you this, too. Uh, I think it's very important. Like, you know, in terms of, like, I always look at Compton, man. There's a lot of black folks that live out in, in California, especially in L.A. I mean, I think y'all got more black folks than any place in the country as far as, like, the density of population or whatever. But, like, you know, I want to, because you were talking about, you know, meeting folks, working with folks from your neighborhood. And, you know, there's this conception about black folks can't work together. We can't be unity, can't be unified or whatnot. And, you know, and Compton got this reputation outside, you know, I don't, you know, we look at y'all as like gangs and stuff in colors. Is it really that bad out there like that in terms of colors I'm, and gangs? I mean, right now it is. I'm in Compton right now when I speak to you right now. And, I mean, in the past three weeks that uh, that I've known about, I've known about three or four people that have been died and uh, that have been killed. Mm. And, um, actually, um, my stepson was shot maybe a couple of days ago. You know what I mean? I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I wrote it up. Yeah. I'll get into that. I'm sorry to hear Yeah, that. I mean, right now it's a war zone out here in Compton. You know what I mean? We got, we got, we got neighborhoods beefing with different neighborhoods that are so close to each other that I can't understand why it's going down like this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm beyond, I'm beyond, I, I feel like, I've done my time in the streets like that. You know what I mean? Right. I used to be, I'm an ex-drug dealer. You know what I mean? I've, I've, mm-hmm. I've grown up and I've been through all of that, through the through the hood, this, the hood, that, and I'm beyond that point. 
now I'm at a point in my life to where I want to see our children come together. Like, you know what I mean? Like, beyond the gang violence, beyond all of this, as as a, as I want us to stand up as a people. You right. know what I mean? Because we're killing each other over something that we, we didn't even create. Right. Who created red? Who created blue? Mm-hmm. I mean, when you after when you when you get older, when you get older, and you be able to look and sit down and sit sit down and look at it from the perspective that I'm coming from. Now I stood out there and I sold dope on these streets for maybe maybe ten or eleven years of my life. And now that I'm not doing that, I'm not getting no retirement check from that. I'm not mm-hmm. getting no SSI, no Social Security or nothing like that. Well, I don't even watch the SSI because I had to be crazy to do it all of them years to sit back here. And, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? To sit right. back here and then go over it and tell you the stuff that I'm telling you now is not like how. I'm, I'm not getting nothing from that. I don't have shit to show from that life except mistake. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's that's why I, I, that's why I, every day I'm out here when I when I run across kids or whatever I try to tell them the right way because I didn't have nobody to tell me that way I had to figure out that way you know what I right. mean? Mm-hmm. So that's Man, what I'm, I'm into. I'm into into trying to enlighten our children. I go out and I, I mean I've talked through the YMCA and all types of stuff to children that are I went I've, I've gone to school in terrible I mean terrible neighborhoods and I've taught art to children like mm. you know what I mean? Right. I know you got a project coming up with MTV, I believe, that you're going to be teaching art uh, in, uh, I believe, it's August. Is it August or this summer? Um, this, I mean, this summer, August, I'm going to be doing an event. It's uh, it's going to be up in uh, Marina Del, I mean, Malibu. It's going to be mm-hmm. from the Hill, it's going to be from the Hill and Heart Foundation, and, I mean, it, it, it's operated from executives from MTV. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We're working with with children that are, um, that are HIV positive, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To me, that's that's my ultimate goal. Like you know what I mean, to, to help our children that are ill, to help our children that 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 come from the streets. I mean, my thing is just to be, just to be a help to somebody. You know what I mean? Because right. my child, my son, my son has a disease. My son has diabetes. Mm-hmm. So I'm not discriminating on any children because it's not their fault that they that they're diseased. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to work with to to do anything. Like I said, I'm working with anything that's positive. I'm glad to hear it. And also, I mean, how your stepson? I mean, how's he doing? Right now, I mean, he does he does good with it right now. I mean, he's doing so good with it. I mean, he's only been diagnosed with diabetes for about the last four years, and I mean, he's been doing so good with it. They want to run tests on him to find out how he's been keeping it under control, like he is. Well, that's good for he, your son watching what he. I mean, he, is, he ain't doing nothing. Does he? I mean, what is he doing? Like he's exercising. Yeah, he kind of to be uh, like I don't really want to. He, he kind of. It's crazy because he should be watching what he's eating, but he really don't watch what he eat. He just kind of works out, you know what I mean? And he kind of, mm-hmm. he just does his thing. But every time I take him in, his his, his checkups are always good. His A one C is always great. That's a blessing, though, man. I, but I think a lot of time, I mean, like, like you say, he work out. That's the key word. A lot of us ain't really working out. A lot of those guys like office job or desk job. You got some kids better shape in prison than they are in the cubicle. Out here, you got the folks out here in prison. You got the folks in prison that's free. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it is interesting, and also like you know, my, my prayers and thoughts goes out to your stepson as well. I mean, is he doing okay too? Your stepson? I mean, uh, yeah, he's doing okay, man. I mean, he has a broken jaw. I mean, he's doing all right. I mean, he's doing as well as to be expected. I mean, that's I would rather have a broken jaw than death. You know what I, mean? I heard that he lived to fight another day or just you know just be alive. I mean, like, are you surprised how far you have came in terms of you talking about you sell drugs? That's a long time to be a drug dealer out in these streets, man. Like for eleven years, that's amazing that you still are here. I mean, do you think about all the homies that passed away? I mean, have you lost a lot of friends over the years due to the I mean, I life? lost a lot of friends. Like a lot of my friends are, are either they not here or either they doing doing life in prison. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you ever ask why why you why you was able to avoid that fate? I mean, I think that I was uh, able to avoid that fate because I was me growing up, me growing up on the streets. A lot of people, you know, a lot of teenagers they hung around teenagers. Mm-hmm. A lot of the, a lot of the people that I hung around with they were over over my age. You know what I mean? I hung around with man. My old at eighteen, I think my 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 one of my friends was thirty five. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? I'm not going to say that I didn't have any cats that wasn't my age around me, but a lot of my friends were older, you know what I mean? And they taught me about respecting these streets and how to learn and how and, and how, to, how to deal with certain situations. And I feel like that's what carried me so long, you know what I mean, for me for me being out there in the streets like that. Because knock, knock on wood, I never caught a, I never caught a drug case. I never caught no time in jail or nothing oh, like wow. that, you know what I mean? For 11 years? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I did, I did that, I mean. I mean, not damn, you had a lot of, you had somebody watching out for you, you had some angels or something. <laughs> I mean, I, and I, I'm blessed that I did, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a blessing. So, you know, what what is else, what else, what's some other things that, you know, that people might not know about you that you think people should, will be interested in knowing, Brother Risky? What be some other things that people would like to know? I mean, with the other things that people would like to know about me, I mean, I, I started a website with a partner of mine last year on March the 9th. Um, 2011, I started a website called uh, bombfirst.com. It's a Tupac mm-hmm. Death Row history site. You know what I mean? You can oh, go wow. there and find out all types of information. I get interviews from a lot of my friends and rappers, uh, office workers, a lot of colleagues of mine that work at Death Row and work with me in the industry. So, I mean, you can check out exclusive interviews there. I mean, I, I mean, it's just been a, it's just been a, uh, a uh, big year for me working with the bond first, and then I, like I said, I partnered up with Troop about Tupac, and then, I mean, I still have my artwork going on. Oh wow, that's a beautiful thing! I want to ask you as a Phoenix Shakur, people from uh, Tupac Shakur Foundation, reach out to you about the artwork. Has anybody no, actually? No, I haven't had anybody from any type of Tupac related foundation even even reach out to me. I mean, I wish they would. You know what I mean? But all I gotta do is I ask, right? All they gotta do is ask. <laughs> I mean, to me, just being a part of that organization, man, you got some people. I mean, as as crazy as this might sound, man, you got Mm -hmm. a lot of haters out there, man, that don't want to see you get too far up in the ranks because they scared that you're going to do better than them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's all these Mm -hmm. people. Like like people that ain't real, like you know what I mean. That don't want to introduce you or give you that connection, you know what I mean? Because they so in fear. Are you eating a cheeseburger with a little bit more cheese or meat than that? You know what I mean? <laughs> I like I like to use that. You write about there's like a Tyree song about you know people why when you was a why song he did about you know folks got connections, they got resources, but they sit on it and they don't even want to help you halfway or meet no, you halfway. They don't. They don't. They don't want to help, man. They rather they rather not help you, dog. They'd rather not help you than uh, than to, than to even let you even figure out the resources for yourself. You know what I mean? And get and get a little bit ahead. Like once you get ahead, then that's when everybody want to come out the closet. That's true. Right? And claim you. I mean, it's hard to swallow though, but it's reality. Yeah, it is. Super is reality. It, yeah, but is it just unique to black people? You think more so than any other group of people? Or is this a, it's a it's a it's a human thing? It's a human being thing. Man, I, I don't know, man. I, can, I really don't even want to make my people look bad and just say it's a black thing, man. But sometimes we are our own worst enemy, man. We can't get along, man, for nothing. Mm-hmm. I just was talking to one of my friends today, and she had told me something that really made me think about it. She said black people can't stick together because we ain't got no egg in us. You know what I mean? Mm. An egg is like a valuable component on every on sticking stuff together. You feel me? Mm-hmm. When you bake a cake, you use eggs. If you make a nice hamburger patty, you got an egg in it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, that's old school. You're right about that. <laughs> we, we don't got no egg in us, man. We just, we, we so busy. Like back to what I just said, we so busy worried about if his cheeseburger going to have a little bit of ground beef more than mine is or a little bit more cheese, you feel me? Right. We, 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 don't, we don't help. We do not help, dog. We do not help. I want to. I want to see help. Yeah, I noticed that. You know what? It's like you know, people always say get a mentor, but there's so many people that don't even mentor in our community. And you know, it's funny because I talk to black business owners and people like that, and they'll say, "Well, I don't have time to mentor." But I'm saying you want people to buy your stuff, you want people to support your business, so you won't go out of business. Why not invest in your community that supports your business? Why not take the time to to, to help out the next generation? I mean, why is that a problem? Even Louis Armstrong in his letters he wrote, he wrote a lot of letters. But he's talking about how black folks don't help each other. You know, how it's hard to find a mentor. You got people that got resources, but they don't even want to reach out. They talk about, and then, like, uh, in Memphis, in Tennessee, we just passed this sagging law. And I think that's ridiculous, man. Like, you know, you don't have to pass a law to tell kids to pull their pants up. But yet, in a lot of ways, the kids are rebelling against a system that don't respect them as human beings. 
we we accept subhuman treatment from this system. A lot of our kids, they, they just know that something ain't right, and they're rebelling, but they don't know how to articulate or express that sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes we just criminalize our kids. I know, to me, black folks are all group people that think it's okay for our kids to get handcuffed in kindergarten. I don't see nobody else's kids getting handcuffed in kindergarten. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Only black people, we always praying and we always talk about New Testament, but the people that we submit to, they practice Old Testament. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. I, I, the egg stuff, you got a point with that. Do yeah. you, you have any, any words or wisdoms? I mean, it's an honor to talk. You know how much of an honor it is for me as an artist, as a person who really respects uh, the artist, especially a person of your stature. You know, you're a legend in your own time in a lot of ways because of what you have done, your connection with the Tupac legacy. But do you have any other words of wisdom or, or jewels of knowledge that you'd like to add? Man, what I would like to just tell people, man, is that no matter whatever you're facing through on your triumph to be able to get to where you want to be, don't give up. Stay focused, man. You know what I mean? Because I said this before, too. Every At the end of every road, there's going to be always a, fro- a fork in the road. So if you ever feel like you're doing bad, always know that another direction is coming up if you keep focused. Oh, thank you so much, like, Herbert. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like when you you know how you taking a long trip and you running out of gas and you think you ain't gonna never find yeah. a gas station. Yeah, I mean that last out. drop of gas. <laughs> yeah, but then when you feel like you're close to running out, you always hit a gas station. You feel That's me? so true. That's so true. You just gotta keep that focus, man. And stay stay aimed and know and, and know that it's gonna happen. And as long as you know that it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Because like I said, what you put in the universe is what you get back. I just want to just say I want to thank you for what you're doing and for your contribution to humanity. And also we'll keep your family in our thoughts and prayers as you go through this time of recovery, you know, rebirth and, you know, just resiliency. I mean, just keep on doing what you're doing as well. Keep on that road and keep focused. And uh, we really appreciate you. The words are great to go. And we love you madly, man. And you said bombfirst.com, right? That's the website. Yeah, www.bombfirst.com. And that's B-O-M-B number one, S-T dot C-O-M. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate you, man. And uh, go Lakers. Are the Lakers going to go all the way, or you, what do you see? How you see it? Hey, man, I'd love to see them go all the way, you know what I mean? But I'm going to just watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they should have that game wrapped up like, no, in game four or something like that, man. That shit ain't went all that wrong. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm glad they did, did they thing, man, but we ain't supposed to be fans having many heart attacks, you feel that me? No, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? And oh, I yeah. know, like, hey. I was having a little mini heart attack, man. I mean, they went up, and then they, I went up. By the time I blinked, man, they was back getting tied up, man. You ain't supposed to be supposed to ride all like that. We supposed to kill them and get them over with. Let, them, let, right. them, let them ride. Go. Let them go ahead and earn that check in that fourth quarter in the last couple of minutes and just sit sit it out, man. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you on that. But it's gonna be interesting, the Oklahoma Thunder, man. That's gonna be an interesting series, though. Hey, well, I don't know about the Oklahoma Thunder, man. Man, if they are next thing, we probably going to blow them out real fast. <laughs> you think so? All right, I'm, 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 I'm going to actually record it. This is your words. Okay, I'm, I'm going to keep you over your head. <laughs> hey, man, yeah, you're going to hold, yeah, you hold on to that one because I'm going to go ahead and say we blow them out. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you got the Lakers and who else is going to be in the finals then? Man, in the finals, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead, man. Like I say, I'm gonna watch, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that we 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 beat the Thunder, man. Okay, we beat the Thunder. If we don't make it to the finals, we beat the Thunder. That's good, that's good enough for right now. So you think they're gonna get the White Howard next year, or they they gonna keep the, what they got right now? Oh uh, no, nah, man, we probably gonna get the White man. They got it. The, the trade ain't finished, man. If they did, they did my boy in the Marco like that, man. The trade ain't finished, man. I heard this. We think Bynum gone and Gasol gone and get the White House somebody else. Man, I don't think that they're gonna get rid of Bynum, but I think Gasol gonna be gone. Okay. Yeah, I think Gasol. Yeah, I think he'll be out of here, man. They're gonna keep Bynum, man. Cause, I mean, he like a strong force down there, man. You think he's ever gonna reach his potential? Though, I mean, he's just twenty four years old. Where you, you know, it's like he's like you know give and take with him. Like you know, one one game like he's dominating. The next game is kind of like you know he don't know what he's doing himself. I mean, he got to get strict on himself, man. He got to, he got to, you know what I mean? He got to, he got to start getting guidance from Kobe, man. Cause, I mean, he's young, man. He got to, he got to stick with what's, what's, what's going on, man. You got to, you got to keep on playing hard. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? You got to keep on playing hard, keep on doing this thing, man. He can't keep, he can't let them attitudes throw him out and throw him out the league for, for show. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. But that's what they, that's what's going to end up happening. They ain't going to want to keep on dealing with that shit. Yeah, you got to keep paying you all that money. Right. Yeah, they ain't going to keep paying you all that money to deal with your bullshit now. You feel me? Yeah, you're right about that. Hopefully he can get there before Kobe go, man. I think Kobe got three more good years, you know, but he's going to have to get something, man. He, you know, he's in a very, you know, viable position, I mean, a prominent position of learning and being able to advance himself. That's a good thing for Kobe, man, because Kobe been playing basketball all my life, you feel me? <laughs> right, I remember, exactly. I, I, remember, I remember when I was in elementary school, you know what I mean, hearing about Kobe was getting ready to, he was, he was going to the to the uh, NBA and all that. <laughs> well, I think it was, a, it was high school or elementary. One of them, I, I seen him because he went to the prom with Brandy, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. He did, man. So it was one of them years that he that, that I was growing up that he was doing this thing. So, yeah, it might be, it might be time for him to, you know, sit down for for he be receiving like, oh, boy, uh, what's up, boy, with the, the LeBron? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, LeBron got though. <laughs> right. He got a hell of a hairline on him, man. Oh, yeah. If that's, if that's his <laughs> real hairline, he might just let it all go. But, yeah, I agree with you on that. But hey, LeBron's supposed to be on 27, 28, or 27, or something like that. Oh, man. If he got a hairline like that, he's 27 to 28. Yeah, I would definitely let it all go. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, Risky, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for sharing that jewels of wisdom. Man. Well, also, will LA get a football NFL team again? Yeah. I think we will, but who can tell now since Magic then bought the Lakers now? I mean, um, the Dodgers now. Who, so Magic bought the Dodgers? I mean, yeah, Magic just bought the Dodgers. You feel me? Magic oh, wow. really was supposed to have invested everything, got rid of everything, was supposed to be an investing into this NFL team, but now that he got the Dodgers, what are, what are we going to be looking forward to? Or is he just going to own both the teams? That's interesting. I'm impressed with that. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a business man. <laughs> he is. I think we're gonna get one though. Y'all deserve one though. I mean, y'all a large market. It, it don't make no sense to me. Y'all would have a team. Yeah, man. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. And then they got all the football. Only football team we got up there is the is the, is the Raiders and the Forty uh, ers and they way up in in fucking Frisco. Right. Then you got the Chargers. You know, they about, I thought they was talking about moving them up to LA. I don't know, but yeah, it's interesting. The politics of it all. No man, we don't we don't want them. Yo, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't understand want them. why. <laughs> I don't want them. I heard that. Well, brother Risky, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for sharing so much of your valuable time with us here uh, to talk about no your problem, career. No problem, man. Thanks, thanks for calling. No problem. You take care. God bless and happy Mother's Day for your fam. Man, appreciate that, man. I tell my mama you said that. I mean, he don't you know who the hell I am. I appreciate that. It's done in great. <laughs> good spirit. It was done in spirit. <laughs> right. You take care, man. I will. Thank you. Peace. Peace.
Thank you.